My name is Dulma. So before I start my presentation, let's, let me acknowledge uh, the land, land here in Canada. Uh, I acknowledge and respect the Lekwangyong people where the uh, traditional territory of uh, the university stand and the Songhees, Eskimold, and Vesanish people whose historical relationship with the uh, land continue to this day. Uh, and also greetings from Sri Lanka, as well as greetings from Canada. Uh, so today I'm going to discuss about the social archaeology of Yakshi figures in early Buddhist built environment of India. So I wish to do this presentation comparatively uh, with Sri Lankan context where uh, appropriate. Uh, regarding my research methodology, I mainly uh, collected uh, uh, information and also selected primary data uh, that is uh, sculptured art uh, of uh, Buddhist uh, stupa sites such as uh, Sanchi, Bharut and Amaravati uh, and primary data was collected through observational field visit we know unfortunately most of the archaeological uh, evidence are scattered in many places uh, luckily Sanch is there and even preserved uh, the archaeological like heritage uh, in situ uh, but unfortunately Amaravati collection and Bharut collection uh, we, we have to go to several uh, museums for that. At the same time, I went through some historical texts and uh, examined the museum uh, object, and there still there were some gaps. So I consulted some archival collection, and especially the recordings during the colonial period, they had provided some line drawings, uh, photographs, and detailed recordings of these places. Uh, uh, so I analyze uh, those uh, I analyze those uh, information treating them uh, on an issue related and uh, issue related and uh, problem oriented platform so regarding the yakshi uh, yakshas and yakshis in uh, indian art or the south asian art here we can mention about the contribution of ananda kumara swami by publishing two volumes uh, and so mainly his uh, uh, first uh, volume uh, extensively discuss about uh, this portrayal of yakshi and yakshas in indian art at many places so we can see that name yaksha uh, that uh, that comes in and appears in many uh, cultural, historical, cultural contexts. So when we go through the different uh, localities and languages, we can recognize in Sanskrit, Yaksha and Yakshi, uh, and in Pali language, Yakka and Yaki. So in Sri Lanka, most of the time, we, we it's very familiar to us as, as the religious language of the country's Pali, and also uh, in Sinhala, Yaka and uh, Yaka and Yakshani in, in Sinhalese language. But when we go to again back to the Sri Lankan context, so the literary sources uh, of the country, the Great Chronicle, Mahabams, and several other uh, in, uh, literary uh, textual sources mentioned that uh, there were four tri tribal groups uh, uh, in the country uh, by 6th century BCE. They were Yakshas, Nagas, Devas, and Rakshas. So they are recognized as a tribal community. And, and regarding Yakshas, they were very, they were not supernatural or uh, the, the kind of harmful uh, creatures or uh, mythical creatures, but they were recognized as a, a kind of a tribal community or indigenous uh, group of people. And uh, we can see that they are connection, even till date, they are connection with uh, right at the moment we don't have that kind of uh, tribe but we still see the uh, connection of traditional iron and techno uh, iron and stone technology with these uh, yakka people 
Here I situate all these uh, sculptured art on a problem oriented and issue related platform. So then I asked several research questions to recognize uh, the, the function of these uh, female yakshi figures, the mainly the function which these female yakshis uh, uh, fulfill within their uh, actual context and also how these yakshis were depicted the physical features and different forms of yakshis and the, the main question as why yakshi figures in this buddhist architecture because we, we recognize that they were not directly related to uh, buddhist uh, architecture but why why they are th those non buddhist uh, imagery uh, can be recognized within these buddhist archaeological sites and also how yakshis were incorporated into the we know that they are there. So then I asked the question how yakshis were incorporated into the Buddhist architecture. Um, I don't separately ask this question, but from time to time with my presentation order. So I have, um, like collectively ask these questions and provide some answers. And also when I uh, answer and analyze this thing, I use uh, gender as a lens to look at these images. Uh, and also, I would like to mention the extensive contribution of Vidya Dahijia uh, because she has discussed it uh, in her gender uh, issues in Indian art, this kind of uh, perspective. So it is important. Uh, so the, the Vidya Dahijia's contribution provided me a guide and, and assured me in a remarkable way to uh, develop my research questions and examine this uh, sculpture that Uh, we, uh, I, I mentioned uh, different kind of uh, that there are different kind of objectives behind those female figures, female yakshi figures. There are male figures as well, but here I restrict my presentation to female figures. And sometimes I saw the when I go through the program, I saw there are there were some presentations about yakshis and also hariti. So sometimes I also might. Uh, repeat some of the areas you have already uh, obtained from other uh, presenters. Sorry about that. Uh, this is the auspicious women, how we, we can recognize female yakshi figures on the Buddhist railings and different parts of the railing. We know the uh, uprights, the stumbles and the crossbars and the coping stones, so different places of this uh, uh, Buddhist railing. Uh, as an auspicious symbol. Here, this is Baharutu Stupa, right now it's in Kolkata Museum, and you, you can see at the entrance uh, how we can see uh, such female uh, yakshas, but uh, and yakshis, I have to mention here, we mainly, do, we sometimes directly name them as yakshas. There are some label yaksha figures at the same time, uh, some of other cults very much related to yaksha concept. So they were also like uh, interpreted as divine or semi-divine like Sirima Devata. So, and they were uh, incorporated into this imagery. And the, uh, earlier it was on uh, Bharat uh, Stupa uh, railing. Right now we can recognize that kind of female figures, uh, topmost panel of the architrave. Uh, of Sanji gateways. Uh, here, some of uh, the scholars will recognize, and even in the popular tradition, uh, this figure is popularly known as Gajalakshmi, but in first century BCE, uh, both uh, at Amaravati, uh, both at Baharut and Sanji, we can recognize same kind of figure. So I, I'm not going to introduce her as Gajalakshmi. We really don't know. It, it comes uh, with the uh, Hindu tradition, but we, uh, we really don't know the exact that word uh, they use in the actual context and and even this uh, figure this female figure has a uh, background and i think she should be belong to local tradition as a uh, cult of their little traditions here you can see how 
how she has uh, located on this uh, top architrave as the central figure, as the focal point of the gateway. So that is the important given to that uh, uh, female figure uh, within this uh, context. And when we pay attention to the Amaravati art here, you can see uh, a Yakshi figure within a Buddhist window, the Chaitya Kavat. Uh, so uh, even this kind of, there are several replication of the same kind of uh, uh, panel uh, earlier at the gateway. Now, uh, then uh, even previously on the railing gateways and on Chaitya Kavat, that is also a kind of an entrance. Then we can ask why she was portrayed or depicted uh, at the entrances. That is mainly due to the uh, auspiciousness, women as an auspicious symbol, and mainly female yakshis or uh, semi divine creatures as uh, an auspicious symbol. Uh, and also the next, I would pay the attention how we can recognize those female yakshi figures as a representation of the nature, we can closely examine this aspect uh, in Indian uh, Indian uh, structured art. Here you can see that uh, Yakshi figure um, at the Sanji gateway as a bracket figure, yeah, like connecting the, uh, the uh, architrave and the uh, stumba or the upright and uh, popularly known as Salabanjika or Vruksha Panjika. So let's discuss why, why these women are connected with the nature and why such uh, imagery came to this uh, uh, came to this Buddhist archaeological site and uh, what is the social notion about uh, such imagery. Uh, we mainly recognize uh, that uh, female yakshi figures carved against the pillar of the railing. So there are many, many uh, such uh, yakshi figures uh, and we can recognize different vehicles as well. Uh, uh, here, is an, here is a horse. At the same time, we can see an elephant, makaras, and that kind of many ways. When she is, uh, when she is depicted with a tree, uh, we can see she's standing beneath the tree and uh, most commonly one leg uh, she wrapped uh, around the tree trunk and the, at the um, at the same time her one one of her arms uh, pulling uh, the tree branches downwards towards her so that is the popular application uh, and here as well you can see some uh, art um, sculpture that from baharut um, and here that is Bodh Gaya and the railing here you can see one Yaksha helps her to uh, climb that tree there also you can see how she uh, uh, keeps her leg around the tree here as well. Um, at the same time, you can see this is normally the, the portrayal of uh, narrative panels uh, on uh, narrative panels on uh, stone uh, architecture. So they have created this, the popular way of uh, presenting that is a medallion. So in the middle, we can see the uh, full medallion at both ends. We can see those half medallions. Uh, right here, you can see the same kind of female yakshis just as a decoration uh, and adjacent to those uh, medallions narrative. And yes, before I came. And even uh, Vidya Dehijia has highlighted how, how this, uh, uh, how the Sanskrit uh, Tantrasara codified these uh, ideas and provided, she has provided extensive uh, description about uh, how women cause uh, them to blossom or bear tree. That is the main reason behind that. So uh, the popular social ideology was, uh, so women, uh, the good women can uh, blossom a tree and uh, the, the, the main force behind those uh, prolific like fruits uh, is a, a touch of a woman. So mainly that uh, tantras mentioned, Sanskrit tantras mentioned different trees and the connection with the woman uh, behind this uh, uh, fertility and prosperity. The vakula and kar the golden yellow flowers will blossom if a woman sprays uh, 
uh, from with the uh, ambosia of their mouth, uh, Karnika also blooms uh, to the sound of a woman uh, conversation. The mango and the neem trees will blossom to the sound of a laughter, uh, sound of their laughter. And Tilaka, the saffron flower, and Namaru that provide uh, Rudraksha beads, and Piala, the type of another fruit, uh, will blossom around the sound of a woman singing. Uh, Kuruaka and Sindhuara trees uh, will respond if a woman embraces these trees. And also orange flower Kadamba and the beautiful fragrant Champak will blossom if the tree just touched by a woman. Then, uh, so this that 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 strong social uh, belief and the uh, the notion I think uh, invited such people and and constantly repeated such figures at Sanchi and Baharud, uh, so, uh, and also as well uh, and also i will come back to the uh, uh, the place again because there is a connection to the same uh, idea from sri lankan context as well uh, and and you can see some female figures uh, on a cloud on the pillars without a tree but she carries several flowers and many objects uh, in her hand uh, and and mainly we can see some other types of uh, uh, female yakshis on the railing, uh, like as a decoration of uh, pros uh, lotus medallion of Prosper right in the middle. You can see she was encircled with this lotus pestle, and 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 we can see this mirror on her on her hand. That is one of the. Uh, way that prescribed by some uh, uh, Sanskrit texts, uh, prescribed dressed uh, um, application of some female figures. So may, we commonly see it uh, Bharat as well, and also some uh, female figures uh, on on these uh, lotus medallion. Here you can see Padma Gandhi uh, mode of female figures. I will come back to this again, uh, and on uh, Bharat uh, railing crossbars. Uh, when when we uh, think about yakshis on gateways, and here you can see Sanchi gateway and 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 her uh, location. So not only as a bracket figure in between this architrave and the uh, that uh, uprights, and here also you can in between each architrave also you can see the similar representation in a small version of those. Sala Banjika Yakshi or Vruksha Banjika Yakshi. Here again, you can see a close examination. There, you can see how uh, we can see lots of fruits and flowers associated of these, uh, and mainly uh, mango. And you heard how uh, Shilpa that uh, Tantras mentioned about mango tree. So, so the, the depiction of that fruits along with these female figures uh, pro, uh, projects the the same uh, the same idea uh, described uh, in in such uh, textual sources and those are the uh, small figures in between architraves Uh, and also uh, Shilpa Prakash, uh, uh, that is a medieval orison Sanskrit text on temple architecture. That is one of the uh, source, uh, important source regard uh, uh, this regard. And uh, it mentioned about uh, 16 type of women can be um, uh, appropriately uh, suggested by this text. Uh, it's, a, it's a Sanskrit uh, a manuscript. They are, uh, Dalamalika, uh, uh, the form that is garlanding herself with a branch. So that is what we earlier discussed. So, uh, so this this uh, Sanskrit uh, text helps to recognize how how this concept was popular in the time. This is what I mentioned earlier. The, uh, we can recognize some sculptured art uh, that uh, depicts direct uh, Andhra influence. Maybe uh, even even the 
even the stone is not uh, from Sri Lanka. So we, we believe that uh, the archaeological reports also uh, provide this uh, idea. Uh, those uh, small plaques were imported from South India, maybe as souvenirs or a gift from the area because we have direct, uh, we had cultural, direct cultural connection between Andhra Pradesh and Sri Lanka. So uh, Andhra art tradition is not very much restricted to Amaravati or Nagarjuna Konda. It's kind of a regional art tradition in the time. So we can see the same kind of Vrukshabanjika figures at uh, Jetavana Museum. And also uh, this is from Nag line drawing from Nagarjuna Konda sites uh, before they, uh, that is uh, the first step they created a uh, kind of a line drawing. Um, so I just created this one to showcase uh, the similarities uh, between Sri Lankan and Indian, that kind of Rukshabanjika figures. Uh, and also uh, these women figures came to the temple uh, as a prerequisite and especially this Shilpa Prakash, uh, the, the, the Sanskrit manuscript I mentioned earlier. Uh, regarding the temple architecture and the uh, information given to those uh, uh, given to those uh, architects and the sculptors and it, it clearly mentioned without a woman uh, the monument will be inferior quality that's mean without female figures as the decorative models and um, uh, to adorn this temple the monument will be inferior so i think it is kind of a strong uh, uh, a quotation and also you here you can see that kind of different uh, form so we can recognize that kind of 16 uh, uh, of uh, that kind of uh, suggestions by the uh, by this textual by this uh, manuscript Uh, and most importantly, uh, one of the uh, 18 forms is uh, Matru Murti. So normally the mother with her infant in her hand, you can see the, uh, the number of the verse and, and some quotations from <clears throat> that uh, Sanskrit manuscript. And uh, most common depiction of such uh, Matru Murti is Hariti. Uh, we, uh, we we can see the popularity of uh, that Hariti figure and mainly sometimes uh, she is depicted uh, with her the full uh, well-shaped breast and touching her breast and also depict with the child and also most commonly with several uh, five in numbers. And also we can here see that 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 five in number that represents uh, the story behind this Hariti that is 500 children she got by uh, Panchika uh, and this uh, and it is not very much limited to Indian context we can see in, in many places of India as well as uh, other South Asian countries and, and also from Southeast Asia, this is one of the best example that is Hariti relief uh, from Chandi, uh, you know, Java, uh, Indonesia. There you can see that kind of like um, amount of a considerable amount of uh, infants uh, associated with this Yakshi figure. So this reminds the popularity of this concept and also uh, the 500 uh, kids uh, mentioned uh, in this uh, literature. And also Ananda Kumaraswamy has provided uh, an extent lengthy description about the story and this story, the, the when they, the Hariti originally belonged to uh, the little tradition and, and recognized as a Yakshi and demoness and how she was incorporated into the main pantheon. So why, uh, and uh, so they normally they, when they absorb such cult into the main pantheon, they create a story uh, with their uh, gods and goddesses. So how, how her story is connected to the Buddha and make a kind of a background and a kind of a um, logical reason uh, to absorb the believers or the devotees of Hariti. Uh, and and but uh, and also in several times uh, Anand Kumara Swami mentioned that uh, uh, before she become um, a Buddhist uh, uh, devotee and a protector 
characters. Uh, she uh, caused some, uh, she caused some plagues or, or epidemics. So, but in Sri Lankan context, we don't recognize that kind of Harithi figures. Uh, I think uh, I, I think we had that tradition in a different way with Silapadikaram and Mani Mekalevos. They were very popular in Sri Lanka. We got from South India and Kannagi concept was reinterpreted as Pattini and she is recognized as the behind many of such epidemics and we and Sri Lanka until date we worship that concept and also we have hundreds of such imagery uh, concerning uh, this uh, the same concept and recognized as uh, protectors of uh, infants preg and pregnant women and this is one of her maternal role uh, depicted in indian art forms uh, and also as a protectors we can recognize uh, this uh, figure with uh, some uh, door jams. Uh, it, here it is in uh, Ajanta, right here. You can see you can see Harati with the little uh, infant. And it is very much popularly uh, in Ajanta, Elora, and Aurangabad caves. And even Hyun Sang mentioned uh, how, how uh, those kind of Harati uh, temples were popular in the Indian context. When we recognize some female uh, yakshis in Buddhist art, both Sanchi, this is Sanchi, from Sanchi Stupa number one, and also from the railing of uh, Bhut Gaya, we can recognize uh, this horse uh, face uh, uh, woman, the Aswamukhi, and it is also kind of a common depiction. This reminds me the story, the Jataka story of Padamanavaka in the Sri Lankan context and how uh, it is popular in the country. When we see the Yakshi figures uh, in Sri Lankan Ayakas, we can see how she was, uh, we can see that we, we also copied uh, and a great influence of Andhra tradition. You can see they are exactly like Andhra figures. This is how we uh, located those Yakshi figures, uh, the side uh, pillar of uh, Ayaka. They are, she was like located, we can see the hierarchical order right here, the, the, the big male figure on the top panel and she's small and uh, lower panel. So this uh, showcase in everywhere, this is the same way. So this showcases, we copied that Indian context and but we recontextualized the social, uh, like social norms uh, uh, towards the gender. Uh, when we uh, reinterpreted them in the Sri Lankan context. And most of the time, the most common feature is the, the that kind of heavy sensuality of this Yakshi figure. And sometimes people at their first glance will question uh, and and why this kind of uh, overemphasized uh, female femininity is there and what is the function of that and also Vidya Dehijia uh, discuss this uh, discusses this story as like women as the like uh, the object of the gaze and 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 men as the bearer of the gaze the concept and she highly criticizes about the Western uh, um, scholarship and the feminist criticism. Uh, against these figures uh, by contextualizing these figures and questioning the actual context of these figures. We know that uh, popularly oh, those uh, Buddhist uh, sites were recognized with the royal patronage, but that is not the reality behind those uh, uh, sculpture that we know most of the railings and the uprights, uh, uh, crossbars and the coping tones, they were separately commissioned by different groups of people so we can recognize the collective patronage there. And when we uh, examine the inscriptions, donative inscriptions associated with these images, sometimes these images were donated by uh, women uh, and also uh, nuns and some Buddhist monks uh, had who had a uh, high uh, religious status then that challenges the Western scholarship as like uh, Vidya Dehijia discussed. So, so I think I am coming to the conclusion of my research and that is that we can recognize this concept of, that is uh, evoked uh, from several female cult, originally the, the actual forms of uh, female cult uh, from different societies, especially from uh, village uh, cultures and they, de they demonstrate how they were valued within their respective societies and women's possibilities 
decision and most of the female uh, and most of the village deities can be recognized as uh, female deities and women and nature uh, within the indian art is very much uh, very much common that is why we can recognize that kind of many figures and also the function of uh, female figures as an auspicious symbol was highlighted and and also her positive uh, uh, powers as uh, positive powers with fertility uh, prosperity uh, and abundance was very much highlighted and also protectors of these religious places at the entrance uh, as the protectors of the guardian uh, as well as the protective for her protective force for the children and the pregnant women is one of the remarkable way we can recognize through this imagery and also prerequisite on the wall, uh, temple walls as described in Sanskrit text. Uh, and also, uh, finally, uh, they were when they were cons uh, like consolidated into the main pantheon, we can recognize they were given a different uh, form, like uh, kind of a divine or semi-divine appearance. Uh, and also, all these images says the cultural diversity in the time and how Buddhism, uh, how Buddhism catered the cultural diversity in the time, uh, and also. Uh, the, the same kind of uh, images, Yakshi images can be seen within Jain traditions and Hindu traditions. So those images uh, can be recognized as shard symbol as well. Uh, uh, I have here mentioned few of uh, the references I cited and there were so many articles as well. Thank you very much for uh, giving me this opportunity and thank you, Professor Nair, for inviting me to uh, deliver this uh, uh, talk. Uh, I'm, I'm very much, I'm tremendously honored to have this opportunity. Thank you.